everybody. This is the OU Weekly Matchup Show as the Oklahoma Sooners and the Missouri Tigers will meet Saturday night, September 24th, primetime audience, and the game can be seen nationally on FX. Have you seen the point spread for this game? Wow. 21 and a half point favorites Oklahoma is. I almost fell out of my chair when I saw that. I mean, I knew OU'd be a big favorite, but not by more than 20 points, and that's exactly the case um, against Missouri. It could be the last time, by the way, we see these two teams play each other in the regular season. We'll talk more about that later. Um, but first, a couple of follow-ups for OU as a result of the victory over Florida State. Two players I didn't give an opportunity to give props for the other night, but deserve mention, Tressway and Jimmy Stevens. Tressway, the punter, three punts deep in Florida State territory, including one which didn't look pretty, but got the job done. Rolled outside the Florida State 10. Most important thing about those punts, kept the ball away from their dangerous kick returner, Greg Reed. So great job, Tressway. And also, props to Jimmy Stevens. Made all of his field goals, including the one at the end, that put the game out of reach. Didn't clear the crossbar by much. It was a knuckler of a kick. But as a team from coming to America might say, the ball made it through that uh, big H, or that pigskin made it through the big H. But anyway, terrific job by Jimmy Stevens and by Tress Way. Your feet were very valuable on Saturday night. Talking a little bit about what happened this past Monday. If you didn't hear, the OU Board of Regents met in Tulsa. They gave OU President David Boren the okay for him to pursue conference realignment for the Sooners athletic program. This leads me to believe that it's becoming more and more likely that the Sooners, as well as Oklahoma State, are going to leave the Big 12 and join the Pac-10 perhaps as early as next year. If that's the case, I wouldn't be surprised if Missouri joins the SEC. Currently, the Southeastern Conference has 13 teams thanks to Texas A&M's addition. SEC, I'm sure because of scheduling, and they don't want an uneven uh, number of divisions as far as the teams in the divisions to um, come into reality. Have a 14th team, you can have seven teams in each division. Missouri, because they have two of the top 30 TV markets in the country, Kansas City and St. Louis. From that perspective, it makes a lot of sense that they invite Missouri, and I think that's going to happen, and I wouldn't be surprised if that happens um, quite early. So it doesn't look like Missouri or Oklahoma at this time next year will be in the Big 12. It would take um, a big miracle from the Big 12 perspective for that to happen. We can finally now talk about Oklahoma and Missouri. Last year, OU was number one in the BCS. Took a trip to Columbia, Missouri, came back losers. Lost the game thanks to a bad start, opening kickoff, Missouri returned for a touchdown, and then... When Oklahoma took the lead entering the fourth quarter, Missouri took the momentum right back and outplayed the Sooners in that final period, won the ball game, and again, Oklahoma lost their number one BCS ranking and were never a national championship contention for the rest of the season. So now Oklahoma gets a shot at Missouri, the rematch. The only time Bob Stoops ever lost to Missouri was last season. Talent-wise, Oklahoma is a better team. No question about it. Experience-wise, uh, as far as quarterback, edge to the Sooners as well. The revenge factor, Oklahoma. Home field advantage, where Oklahoma hasn't lost a game since 2005. Advantage, Oklahoma. So why is this one of those games that you should not overlook if you're Oklahoma? Well, number one, you should never overlook anybody in college football. Anybody at all. Uh, number two, Missouri still has a lot of players back from that uh, team from last year, including all the wide receivers. And I think key number one to this game is going to be contain yak, yards after the catch. That's where Missouri can really hurt you. They're going to complete passes, okay? Their style of offense, the way they run their offense, they're going to complete passes. T.J. Moe is going to get his receptions. Wes Kemp is as well. All-American tight end Michael Agnew will as well for Mizzou. But it's what Missouri does after the catch that will go a long way toward determining just how good of a shot Missouri has at upsetting the Sooners. They get a lot of yards after catch. Watch out. It's going to be a high-scoring game. If Oklahoma can just contain, wrap up the ball carrier, hit them low, making sure they don't get that extra yardage after the catch, Sooners should be just fine. The front seven of OU, the first two games, has been sensational, especially Tom Wart from his middle linebacker position. Tony Jefferson has 
been terrorizing the, op the opposing offenses from him strong side linebacker spot. And now you have Travis Lewis back at the weak side linebacker spot, back earlier than anticipated. And the front four has been terrific, led by the hammer, Ronnell Lewis, as well as Frank Alexander on the other defensive end. These guys have done terrific. They'll be put to the test against another athletic offense and another athletic quarterback in the form of James Franklin, who's kind of like E.J. Manuel, good on his feet, strong arm, but has not played in big ball games. It's almost identical to last week, so hopefully we'll see an identical result as last week when Oklahoma limited Florida State to just one touchdown. See if they can do it again against the Tigers. Key number two, that ground game, keep it going. Um, we saw that opening drive for the Sooners against um, Florida State last week in which they mixed it up brilliantly, ran the ball, terrific offensive line, opening the holes for both Clay and Whaley. And then the fourth quarter, we know you had that seven-point lead and needed to milk both yardage and minutes. They were able to do both thanks to the ground game. Ground game does well, sets up Landry Jones in that passing game, and then whew, watch out. So hopefully we'll see a repeat of that. Number three, have to do better in the red zone, though. Three is always as good as zero. It's always better than zero. But three will never be as good as seven. Field goals are nice, but you prefer touchdowns, especially when you get inside the five-yard line. Twice Oklahoma had drives crap out because they couldn't punch it in. They had to settle for field goals. You get those touchdowns against Florida State, we don't have that drama in the fourth quarter. So opportunity knocks for Oklahoma. You got the win at Florida State, but it doesn't mean you can't get better. And this is a big area where Oklahoma can see significant improvement when they get down there. Play calling hopefully will be better when they get inside the five, but hopefully the offensive line doesn't get backed up and put Oklahoma in fourth down where they have to kick field goals. So watch out in that area for the red zone. And then number four, talked about it, avoid the letdown. You just came off a big road victory over FSU. Get the job done. Get FSU out of your mind. You're playing Missouri this week. And this is sometimes where upsets occur. So focus on Missouri. Forget about Florida State and you'll be fine. Final thoughts on this game. Oklahoma is going to win. They don't ever lose in Norman. They'll get revenge on Missouri. But 21 and a half points is a ton of points. And I think Oklahoma will win comfortably. But that's just too many points out there. 21 and a half. So I've got OU winning 35 to 17 over Missouri. Sooners will get the job done, but that's a lot of points to be given. My post-game show will be Sunday morning, early Sunday morning, so hope you can catch it then. Sooners to remain unbeaten. Boomer Sooner.